Welcome back to Stasis. We've just gotten a bunch of items. We have the holographic emitter, which is definitely going to be used for the motion detector. We also have a lighter, which is definitely going to be used for the methane. And we have a pull cue, which is going to be used for... I have no idea what. But uh, before we go and use them, let's go ahead and read these PDA entries. See if we can figure out what happened to these people that seem to have been skinned. Stacy Dipinar. Tammy and I had a great evening together. This mystery alcohol is pretty much a miracle. It made my throat burn terribly, though. <laughs> oh my god. I thought I was literally going to starve. This stupid fungus crap ruined all the food. We finally got a delivery, and it was great to eat something. The new food isn't as good as the food Hydro makes, though. I wonder if Kane Corp would let me volunteer for Project Seed. Surely they give you some great benefits for volunteering. You just have to have been pregnant before, I think. Do abortions disqualify you? I'll look into it. Nope. They need volunteers who have actually birthed a baby, or miscarried late in the pregnancy. You have to be at least 18 years old, for whatever reason. How'd Kane know I was 17 anyway? I thought those documents looked darn realistic. Oh well. I guess I didn't want a bunch of experiments on me anyway. Oh, that's a loud plane overhead. <laughs> you probably can't hear it through the, uh, the sound of the music in the background. Uh, anyway, I'm literally freaking out. The groom like went like boom, and then stuff started falling and shaking. I almost got a fork stuck in my neck. Jeb got caught under a bed. Now I feel bad for calling him a creepy old man all the time. I had a good idea. I said that we should use the tubes that we send the experiments through to get people to medical because the trams are broken. Everyone loves me now. But Tammy is going to help. She's so brave sometimes. I'd go too, but she said not to. She's kind of like a mom to me, but she says that would be weird because we're best friends. Oh, so it was her idea to send people through the, uh, the place that they send the, uh, experiments through, instead of the trams. Tammy's not back yet. I don't know what to do. If I never had that stupid idea, she'd be okay. It's my fault. Robin says it's not my fault, but I know it is. I'm just so stupid and useless, like I was at home. I don't even have a home. All I do is hurt people. I wanted them to get me. I killed Tammy, and now it's my turn. Zane carried me to the recreation area. I kicked and screamed as loud as I could, but he dragged me in anyway. I wish I could be a good person like him. I'm useless. I think I'll sit by the door so that they get me first. Maybe I can buy everyone else a second or two. Poor Stacy. Neville Chambers. Ah, oh, there's not many entries here. Just four. And they're uh, pretty spaced apart. Can't believe I'm actually in space. I know that a whole lot of people have been here, but you really don't appreciate the cosmos until you see it from beyond Earth's atmosphere. It's not something to be taken for granted. I hope this is the beginning of a long journey for me. If I could just live in the void for eternity, I would give anything. I don't miss Earth at all. Unbelievably, the gazes of passing asteroids are less cold than most humans. It's amazing to see all the constellations, up close and personal. I've started writing a comic about myself, The Space Adventurer. Although I've just been sweeping and dusting on the Groom Lake, I know it's my key to becoming one with the cosmos. My comic book is coming along nicely. I've decided that I'm not going to make myself a superhero, but I'll lead a team of super geniuses, and we'll use the power of the universe to save it. My sidekick is Carl Sagan. 
Einstein pilots the Bride Pond, that's my awesome ship, and Hawking crushes stuff with his cybernetic limbs. Issue 1 done. <laughs> Carl Sagan and Einstein. <laughs> and Stephen Hawking. Oh my god. This guy's such a nerd. I love it. Despite what I've been through, I still love space. I've seen enough movies to know how this is going to end for me. I wish my comic books hadn't been lost in the Tremors. They were pretty much my final testament. I even finished issue 6. We destroy a race of parasitic squid-like guys, except we keep one as a pet and train it to fight for us. It also bites Einstein, who gets a cool scar as a result. Anyway, it's too late for that. I'm going to spend my final days taking in the universe through any window I can find. Peace out, universe. What a cool dude. You're a cool dude. Or, well, you were a cool dude, Neville. Alright, let's get out of here. Alright, now the question is, what thing do I do first? Do I blow up the methane for no discernible reason, or do I go clear out the atmospheric stuff? Um, because that's what was behind the security door that needs the motion scanner, right? Or, that needs the motion scanner. <laughs> the security door that has the motion scanner, that needs motion to be opened. I believe the atmosphere controls were behind that, which will allow me to probably air out the tram station. So that when I open that door, I don't die. So if I do that, then I'm wondering why I need to even do anything with the methane. Like, what's the point of the methane? I don't know, but, but since I'm already down here, I'm gonna try it. It's probably just gonna result in, uh... A unique death animation is most likely all that's gonna happen here. I mean, how can I possibly, like, blow up the methane in a safe way? I mean, the lighter... Like, it's going to be in my hands, which means I'm going to be next to the methane that's going to explode. So... I'm going to save the game. Because I'm going to die. Can I, like, light the pole cue? I can try to make it fit, but it may break. I wonder if John is just going to suicidally hold the lighter up to the methane. Let's see. Well, actually, let me see if I can use a pull key first. Nope, no, no comment. Nothing. That's just crazy. Although... Here we go! You're dead. Oh, what? No, use it. Use... Oh. Oh, I guess he just, uh... Yeah, that lighter is securely held between the broken pipes. Right, so it just needs to be... lit. Um... <laughs> How do you light a lighter from a distance? I mean, you need to, like, press it kind of hard. You gotta roll the thing. You gotta roll the flint or whatever. Well, I mean, this is the future. It could be activated a different way. Yeah, actually, maybe it's just a button press, so maybe I should press it from a distance with the pool cue. Okay, I heard the scream, but he was not dead. He was walking around just fine. <laughs> he died, but uh, he didn't really die. So, I don't, like, I don't really get what happened. I guess he activated it with a pull cue, but it didn't look like he actually did anything. Like, I was about to walk away, thinking it didn't even do anything. Uh, let's try that again. I don't know what I was thinking there. Okay, I guess use it on the pipe grip, and then run! Okay, this time he actually died.
I'm gonna try this one more time. Because I wonder if I have a second to run. You know what's more likely is that I need to, like, disable the methane leak or something. Light the lighter and then re-enable the methane, but I don't know. It doesn't seem like there's anywhere I can actually do that from. Like, this is just a leak, isn't it? Yeah, it's just a leak. You can't just turn off a leak. You need to patch it. One more time. Okay, click, and... Uh, run. You were even close to it, John. John, your body is weak and you disappoint me. I'm very disappointed in you. Okay, well, let's go <laughs> use the uh, projector on the security door. Oh, wait a minute. No. No, I can't. I can't use the projector on the security door. That's why I need to do this, to get back to the security door. That's right, because I came down here- oh wow, I totally forgot I came in here through the, uh, uh, using the bed linen to come down, but it ripped. So I do need to do something here. What in the balls? Hmm. <laughs> well, there's nothing more to do here. I, I already tried filling this up again, and that doesn't do anything useful. Um. Okay. That's just crazy. Although... Oh, I've got it. No. Crazy. I've got it. I've got the solution. Even though it doesn't make any sense, I've got the solution. We plop it in there, and then we activate it from above. And I'm saying that makes no sense because I already managed to run away all the way to here before the explosion actually happened. And you couldn't see any explosion anywhere near me, but he still burned to a crisp. And so if he would die all the way over here, then he would totally die up here. But, whatever. Yeah, like that's safe. He'll be fine, John. Yeah, that makes sense. As we all learned in science class, explosions only go horizontally, not vertically. Tia, I can get back up to the crew quarters. Okay. Back to security. Alright, so we're gonna have a half-working holographic stripper activate this thing. Perfect. Life support. Atmospherics. I can understand why they had all the extra security. I love that John doesn't comment upon the f how weird what he just did was. I can't even pick it up. No, the nudity. Oh. 
Rigor Mortis has left this body a parody of a worker managing the controls. Oh, this is Anderson. Yeah, this is Anderson. Is this it? Could this really be my golden opportunity? I've been transferred to security with a guy named Paul, and some other guy whose name I don't quite remember. It sounded kind of like Sarge, so I'm just gonna call him Sarge. Either way, I'm glad. Maybe I'll finally make real friends. <laughs> and as we know, he really doesn't like being called Sarge. Paul is mean, but Sarge is okay. It looks like food supplies aren't coming in anytime soon. People seem upset, but there's a lot of alcohol around. I don't drink much because my dad used to, and it got scary sometimes. Sarge is still nice when he's drunk, though. Even though he said I'd make a pretty girl. <laughs> Gee, thanks, Sarge. <laughs> like, if somebody said that to you, is that a compliment? I don't... I don't know. I mean, I guess it depends on what they meant by it. We got a mystery package from the cloning vats today. I was even allowed to type the terminal entry. It's supposed to go to Lab 18. The Sarge says we're going to put it in a medical storage bay for now, though. It makes really scary noises. It's named Samantha. I liked a girl named Samantha once. But then this guy, Anthony, was stalking her and then she moved away. Paul just read that over my shoulder and reminded me that the PDAs are for work-related logs only. I don't like Paul. Sarge said I can type whatever I want. Oh, okay. So he did actually like someone named Samantha. I thought maybe, uh... Whoever it was had mentioned, um, Anderson liking a girl named Samantha. I thought maybe... Maybe they had misunderstood Samantha as an actual person, but in reality it was that strange thing from the cloning vats. But no, it looks like Samantha was an actual person. Who was then stalked by some douchebag and then moved away. Yeah. The whole ship just shook a whole lot. Power is out everywhere. Everything is locked down. But we can get through some of it because we're security. I hope nobody got hurt when things were flying around in here. People are trying to get Tram Station B to work because A is closed. I think we killed some people today. Sarge is angry. He's beating on the window. I'm so confused. That was the last entry. Because someone said that uh, Anderson killed himself, right? He couldn't take it. I thought that's what they had said, but it was... So young. Focus, John. Have a heart. Some of them are just fucking kids, Tia. Don't you think I know that? You've only been awake a few hours now. I've been dealing with this for... For it seems like a lifetime. I'm sorry. You're right. Let's just get on with this. Yeah, the logs from one of these two people I think implied that Anderson killed himself, but I think it was only this body that actually said they had slit wrists and looked like they had killed themselves. Hmm. Okay, let's vent it. Attention. Atmosphere vented in tram station B. Okay, this time opening this door should not cause me to m melt. I mean, I guess I didn't melt before, but. I feel like my insides melted from the gas. Wasn't it highly corrosive gas? Ah. <sighs> I found her. Your daughter is in the medical bay. Hmm. All right, let's do this. Hmm. She isn't. 
<laughs> no, 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 she's not. <laughs> I just realized. She's using my DNA to locate my family, right? Like, after months, my daughter's just in the medical bay? And she's gonna be fine? No. You know what I think I'm gonna find? I think I'm gonna find whatever monster has grown out of my daughter. It would still have her DNA, wouldn't it? Yeah. Hmm. Oh. Well, look at that. There's like a lens flare when I mouse over this light. That's weird. Okay, do I go to this place, which I have no idea where that is, or do I go towards the bloodstains? Let's go that way. Specimen transport. Oh, so this is where they're trying to um, transport people. Because the tram wasn't working. Or, or at least where they were thinking of transporting people. I don't know if they actually, uh, actually ever did it. Faint scratching noises coming from the plastic box. Oh god, there's a specimen loaded inside of this container. Black resin permeates through small perforations in the crate walls. There's another one. Uh, I'm gonna save first, just in case the when I touch it, it like opens it up and then something leaps out at my face. Project Kitchen Knife. Hmm. So just a readout? What was that sound? I feel like this is like a control panel that I can do something with. But I can't seem to do anything. Limb regeneration. <laughs> Guess it's just a just a readout. Okay, so I can send things to places, but, uh, what do I want to send and where? Okay, so it shows the map on the, uh, yeah, on the display readouts for both of those canisters for Project Kitchen Knife and Limb Regeneration. So we gotta, like, match it to the right one. Hmm. Well, I don't have any reason to do that yet. <laughs> no. No, I don't think so. There is no other way out of there. There has to be. Let me look around. Fuck, this is all falling apart. Welp, looks like I'm gonna be the one in the tube. We request your cooperation by Alright, we've got a bunch more specimen transport containers, so I guess I need to find one that uh, takes me to the medical bay or something. What happens if you send yourself to the wrong location? to, like, Project Kitchen Knife. I'm kind of curious. Uh, Roger Callan, Quartermaster. The gnarled wreckage of twisted steel sits hazardously in wait. Alright, let's check these readouts. Oh, medical, medical bay. bay. This is it. I just need to, uh, memorize that, I guess. <laughs> Let me write it down. Like that, and then a little of that, and then a little of that. Yeah, yeah, let's get all that in there. Mm. And then a little there, and then, uh, and then, yeah. Okay, perfect. This one was for hydroponics. Project Seed. What? Oh, nothing, just reading out loud. Yeah, I want to try sending myself to one of these horrible projects. Just out of curiosity. Uh, 
Uh, so let's let's try that. Let's try one of the horrible projects. Uh, project kitchen knife. Let's try that first. So this one is a long straightaway. And down, over, up, over, up, over, down. I don't, I don't know if my drawings are going to be very useful. Let's try this. Hopefully I can make sense of it. Whoops. Uh, where's my mouse? My, my mouse is gone. Game, can I have my mouse back? Thank you. Okay, so let's try sending ourselves to Project Kitchen Knife. There we go, so first part is just straight, second part is... Uh, not that. Uh, I think that's it. Yeah, that's it, okay. And third part is... No. That might be it. I think that is it. Yeah. That's it, right? This is no destination set. I'm pretty dang sure that's it. Pretty sure. Like, 99% sure. Hmm. Maybe you just can't send yourself to other places. Okay, let's do the medical bay. That looks right. Mm, okay, so that's that, that, that. So the next part... It's gonna be that, that, and that. Yeah, these descriptions are great, I know. Uh, I think that's it. Looks right. This is a terrible transport system, by the way. Who designed this? Like, seriously, people had to use this every day? Ugh. There's got to be a better way. Like, I don't know. Buttons? Like, a button that says medical bay and you press it and then it goes to the medical bay <laughs> instead of doing a puzzle every time? <sighs> oh, weirdos. There we go. Yeah, medical bay. Stupid. I'm gonna say both. Uh, how am I gonna get out of it? Is what I'm wondering. Quantum devices are not permitted in specimen storage. Quarantine procedures initiated. Uh oh. Quantum storage device reset. Okay, let's see what we can see. This definitely looks like the medical facilities. I think I'm on the right track. Yeah, you're on the medical bay level one. Your daughter is four decks below you. She is so close, John. So close. Oh, I was actually expecting the uh, quarantine procedures for my quantum storage device to be a little bit more extreme. Like, like turrets extend out of the walls and shoot me full of holes or something. All it did was reset my inventory. This machine may run diagnostics on the specimens that arrive via the tube. Specimen receiving. God, those noises, Jesus. This is strange. I'm not reading any PDTs in your area. They should remain active. Even on the de- Tell me, John. Why are you working with this jackal? Dr. Milan. Ah. <laughs> She's been talking about me. Look, 
I'm nobody. I just want to find my family. Without a family, man alone in the world. The impulse with the cold. Now you can think, John. Because make no mistake. You are alone. What did he say? He knew me. He knew my name. Could he help us? John, this is happening because of him. He did all of this. This is all too much for me, too. I'm just a school teacher. I can promise you that I want to find your family as much as you do. We're in this together. You know, something I've considered a little bit is, uh, I wonder if Taya could possibly be some sort of, hmm, I don't want to spoil anything, let's just say, could be some sort of System Shock 2 reveal kind of character, if you know what I mean. I doubt it. I think that'd feel too cheesy. And I actually hope that doesn't happen, because I, I think that would be cheesy. But... It is possible, I suppose. This vending machine has been knocked over, but probably not by an employee. The Kane Corporation certainly didn't subsidize the price of these sodas. Good old Juca-Cola. Banned, banned in several colonies. Juca-Cola is a highly addictive, absurdly potent blast of sugar and stimulants. Hmm. Can I have some? Ooh. What, you don't want to drink it, John? Uh, I think that'll just break it. What, drinking it will break it? John, where's your sense of adventure? Never like Joker Cola. <laughs> Uh, wait, why did he just move it? There's a wire behind it. I, I just touched it just to see if he would get another one. I didn't know he could move it. Oh, shit, what the? Huh? <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, can someone explain? Explain to me why... Okay, those turrets popped up before during the cutscene, and then, like, nobody even commented about them, and then they suddenly just popped up again? I, I don't understand. Does that mean I have to go through this again? Oh, no. I can't skip it. Alright, I'll be right back. Okay, let's go ahead and make a save now that I've gotten past the cutscene. Which, by the way, this is this is a classic mistake. Like, I don't... This is one of those mistakes that have been happening in games for, like, Dozens and dozens of years, and I don't understand why people keep making the same mistake. And the mistake is... Uh... John, where did you go? John, why are you invisible? John? Oh, there you are. Uh... Anyway. <laughs> In invisible John aside. Uh, the classic mistake is... Having a scene where, um... You can die, and then when you reload your save from wherever it last autosaved, you have to go through an unskippable cutscene. Like, that's a classic mistake. It's not. I don't understand why people keep making it, because I figure, like, every game designer ever, unless they're extremely, extremely inexperienced and, and young, would know about this, this problem. And how annoying it is. And it's so easy to overcome. You made an autosave at the beginning of the room, just make another one after the cutscene. Or make the cutscene skippable. It's weird. Um, anyway, alright, so the turrets come out of the floor and they don't shoot me, even though I'm like 10 feet away. And this one over here even looks at me, but apparently if I stand out there, they shoot me. Even though they could have shot me, like, right now. Um, so I don't really get that, but... Never liked you, Cole. <laughs> hmm. 
I'm guessing I keep pushing it. Until they shoot up the machine. Okay, that caused one to break. Uh, I should probably save it again. The loosely hanging insulated cabling sways gently to a silent tune. What if I can, like... Distracted by throwing a, a Juca Cola. I almost called it a Nuka Cola. No. Crazy. I think that'll just break it. Not one body can be seen amid the debris. Yeah, and she mentioned she couldn't find any of the PD, whatever, PDT signs or something which should remain active even on the dead, so it's like something came in and swept up all the dead bodies and used it for... something. Like, uh, hmm. Actually, now that I think about it, maybe it took all the bodies to that place in the entertainment wing, and that's where it skinned them. Hence why there's just piles of bodies. Something has been collecting it. Shredded metal tiles reveal a surface duct below. Alright, so that's where I'm supposed to go. Oh, oh come on! These turrets make no sense. Their range makes no sense. <laughs> this was no safe haven for this poor soul. Yeah, when it comes to sci-fi horror, I think air ducts are probably where the evil things... where the evil things are, rather than a uh, safe haven from the evil things. Found a body, too. He's pretty bloodied up. Notice. Stephen Dreisen. <clears throat> More power outages today. Damn it, I thought they had a lid on that. People have been way crankier than usual. One of my boys just broke down today, shaking and scratching like he was suffering from withdrawal or something. I checked with the nurses who examined him, and it seems like there was some sort of drug in his system. He swore blind he wasn't dirty and hadn't been taking anything, but they're already preparing a tribunal for the poor guy. The thing is, I believe him. Everybody's been acting a bit peculiar lately. What's happening to my beautiful ship? That crap is growing up the spine of this baby like a cancer. I keep mailing Dr. Milan about this, but he hasn't responded to any of my messages. I know he's reading them, because I get more of those stooges from hydroponics down to collect samples whenever I send more than a few words his way. I managed to corner his assistant the other day, and demanded to know where, uh, when we'd be getting our share of the rations. She looked at me like she hadn't slept in a week, and said, Soon. None of us are sleeping properly. I try to greet each day with a smile, but the wrenches are getting panicky, if not mutinous. I spend my time breaking up fights instead of maintaining the engines. I was thinking of taking a group down to the engine ports and torching that shit off the hole, but I'm worried it's too late for that now. No more engineers, no more hope. When you take those things away, you got nothing left. I'm dictating this wedged under the main security terminal. I don't think any of those things will hear me. The rest of the survivors are holed up in the bulkheads, but nobody's willing to risk leaving until we had some sort of protection. I pointed out we'd either starve or die anyway, so they voted overwhelmingly for me to try and get help. So I came down here through one of the maintenance access tunnels, and program the security terminal to mark any individuals with their PDTs still implemented, implanted as hostiles. 
That should at least get the turrets on our side. I'm not sure it'll work, but it's all I could do. Well, that explains why the turrets tried to shoot me. I'm alone now. Hell, I'm used to it. Never met the right girl and all that. I'm pretty sure I heard Lotus screaming, you know. They're probably all dead now, but I can't know for sure. I could hear those things peeling panels off the floor and walls like they were paper, and I'll be damned if, they f if they'll find me cowering under the floor like that. Guy Fox jumped with the noose around his neck when he was about to be executed. Did you know that? They were going to half strangle him and then rip him to pieces, but he cheated the executioners, breaking his own neck before they could carry on torturing him. I'm going to do likewise. Got a gun for my protection, see? Only one bullet left, but no matter. I'll only need one. Oh, there's multiple sections here. Notices and reports. Hmm. From Dr. Something to all staff. Personal data tags. Dear all, for those of you who are still able to receive these messages on the intranet, you'll know by now that the creatures are using our PDTs to proceed past security checkpoints. To prevent this, I've decided that, each in turn, you'll proceed under armed guard to the primary surgery pod, where your PDTs will be removed. Once this is done, we will reprogram the security protocols so that they will target all creatures that still possess these tags. Do not answer the doors to your quarters unless confirmed by the designated password. Today that word is... You know, I actually don't know how to say that word. Aegis? Aegis? I think it's Aegis or something. Huh. Alright, so that explains the lack of PDTs. Yeah, that makes sense. Because it gives you a way to pretty much know for sure. If something has a PDT, then it's a monster. Emails. From him to all engineers regarding the situation. This is how it is. The unidentified substance is still spreading. It's fouled up engine ports D through G, and after a brief confab with the drive engineers, I can tell you that it's having a detrimental effect on the efficiency and speed of the engines. The long and short of it is that the ship is seriously slowing down. The only thing accelerating is the speed of the fungal growth. Its origin is unknown, although we're narrowing it down. This is a crisis situation. Use the hardest stuff you can find to remove it from the fixtures and drive plates without actually endangering the protective casing of the drive cores. Good luck, guys. Steve Dreisen. Yeah, this growth, this growth is... ...is perhaps what set off the explosion. Sentry gun, uh, sentry gun computer control. <clears throat> that will be helpful. That one's broken. This one needs to be turned off or perhaps aimed at something to break it open, maybe. Mm. Maintenance over... <laughs> Maintenance overdue by 295 days. Uh. Oh, this is that Right, this is actually the sentry gun base right here. The turret is poised to spring into the room above and eliminate any unauthorized personnel. Uh, is there like a button that I can actually press here? Whoa. Uh, okay. Alright. Oh, there's the pistol. Did he use the one shot on himself? Or did a monster get him first? A faint smell of gunpowder lingers around the emptied weapon. I guess he did use the one shot. Yep, it's empty. A sickening odor of death and rot wafts into the room, making you gag from its nauseating scent. It looks like that doesn't go anywhere.
Alright, so I've got an empty gun and a can of cola. <laughs> That's just crazy. Hello. I'm not entirely sure what I'm supposed to do with these two things. Like, is there a button I can press on this thing? I don't get it. Every time I click, it just disappears. So there's a stack of empty Juca Cola cans sits below. Use Juca Cola on the base. Hmm. Probably not a good idea. Pour Juca Cola over the computer. Maybe you'll fry it. Oh, wow. Okay, that's actually that's actually what you're supposed to do. Cool. I was not expecting that to work. Okay, can I please not die now? I would really like to not die. Can I not die? I didn't die. Cool. The view through the sliding glass door is obscured by dried red jets of liquid. I hate doors. One override. Coming up. Shit, John! The security systems in medical are inaccessible. It's like they've been locally reset. I can't access anything. I'll think of something. Hmm. Oh, I forgot to grab this again, since the, the reload. Okay, so I've got a cable and an empty pistol. Uh... Hmm, probably not a good idea. Don't suppose the glass is really crappy and I can break it with the butt of the pistol? I think that will just break it. But that's the point! This area has been witnessed to carnage, yet no bodies litter the ground. Hmm. Hmm. Disconnected sentry gun. The gun is most likely for general security. The desperate measures... Yeah. Well, if it still has ammo left, perhaps we could reconnect it with the cable. Maybe set it up on top of it. Oh! Or you could just do that. You're a badass, John. Wow. I think probably weighs like 200 pounds. Warning. This area is off limits to all active PDT users. Please see your supervisor for further instructions. That makes no sense. All PDTs. That's everyone. They must have changed security settings. Stop anyone from heading down below. Or coming up. Yeah, so because of the change of security, the fact that I even have a PDT means that uh, the sentry guns are going to be a problem. Uh, sentry guns and security is going to be a problem everywhere. Because everywhere I'm going to be considered uh, a threat, basically. So if I could get to surgery, perhaps, maybe that surgical machine, you know, and maybe remove my PDT or something, uh, that, that would be nice. Oh, hey. I just saw a ghostly vision of, I think it was his wife and kid? And the violin that's playing right now, was that the, um, the lullaby that they sang? The tune for it? It is. <laughs> that's the lullaby. The lullaby they sang for their daughter. Alright, well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and I'll be back soon.